Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement. And as a regular feature each month on Boom and Bust, I've assembled an excellent panel of guests to guide us through the economic, the business, and perhaps the political issues of the day. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Sandra Pupatello, a former Minister of Economic Development and Trade for former Ontario Premier Dalton McGuinty, Mr. Joe Oliver, former Minister of Finance uh, and former Minister of Natural Resources for former Prime Minister Stephen Harper, and Mr. Gary Marr, former Alberta Cabinet Minister uh, and uh, the Trade Representative for Alberta in Washington, D.C. Welcome to you all. Sandra, Joe, Gary, thanks for being part of this program today. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. So my first question, uh, and I'll be asking all of you, uh, maybe we'll start with you, Sandra. Uh, the Canadian GDP plunged a record 38.7% in the second quarter. Uh, what's, what's your take? Are we going into a prolonged recession, or is it still possible to have a V-shaped recovery? Let, why don't you start us off with your perception of things out there? Well, I think it really does depend on the sector we're talking about because some was such an immediate rebound come the second part of the second quarter of the year that it was almost as if it was coming right back on track. And then some sectors that we have, we can witness ourselves that restaurants aren't flourishing yet. Uh, people just aren't moving around like before. So the service sector, I think, is struggling greatly. Manufacturing, though, seems to be coming back on track. And we know that that's got a huge multiplier in the, you know, for the GDP. So that's a good thing. Uh, I think that we, I, I sort of watch it all and say it could be a lot worse. And frankly, I'm surprised that the drop was only 38 because I've never seen a shutdown in my lifetime like, like we just witnessed. Well, that's a good point. Uh, Gary Marr, you're uh, ensconced in uh, Western Canada, the Canada West Foundation. What's, what's your take on these numbers? Well, it's uh, very difficult, uh, and as Sandra correctly pointed out, it really depends on the sector that you're in. So uh, the city of Calgary, where I'm based, is, uh, you know, there's about a 30% vacancy rate in downtown Calgary's, and uh, that's actually an understatement because there's space that's leased but not occupied. So, um, you know, try and imagine walking through downtown Toronto and every third building is completely empty. So the oil and gas sector has taken a big, uh, a big hit. It's, uh, it's really a continuation of not just COVID-19, but also a, a great fight between the Russian Federation and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to drive oil prices down in an effort to gain market share. And then on top of that, uh, you know, we've got issues with respect to investment uncertainty that's been created in, uh, in this country. And as a consequence, uh, investment in the oil and gas sector has dropped dramatically. From 2014, it was over $80 billion. This year, it might be close to $30 billion. So it's, it's, uh, it's a dramatic shift in, uh, um, in the economic fortunes for a place like uh, the province of Alberta. Uh, Joe Oliver, as a former Canadian finance minister, uh, you've probably never seen anything like this. Uh, also, uh, what, what's your take on where we are and uh, what the possibility for a, a bigger rebound in the future is? Well, you're, you're right. This is unprecedented and there's unprecedented uncertainty. The 38.7% is, of course, a calculation which is annualized. So it's really two months. And so it, it, it's really grim. Uh, we never had a period where the economy was deliberately closed and uh, it is almost I, I agree with with Sandra it's almost as if the, the number could have could have been higher uh, the, the stock market interestingly enough uh, performed its own V um, it, it it fell dramatically until March 23rd and then it moved up and in the United States it's actually um, exceeded uh, the peaks uh, previous to, to to COVID, not as well in in Canada as, as you might have might have expected. But um, business people and economists are not expecting the recovery at all. They're expecting something much more prolonged. Will it be a whoosh? Will it be a W? Will it be a U? Uh, we're not really sure. But it's not going to be as as dramatic a snapback as as the market um, I think is is suggesting. Uh, people are not going to all be coming back to work. Some businesses are clearly going back. It's going to businesses a while uh, to get back and government support programs, while I think they're going to continue to be pretty lavish, are not going to 
be at the same level, perhaps right. uh, that they they were before. We'll, so we we'll, will we'll, have we'll an pick upturn, up the steam but after we got the break. some we got some profound issues. Sure. For we'll pick up the steam right after the break. We'll hear from our sponsors and be right back with the political and economic and business panel. Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum with our first uh, panel for Boom and Bust. I'm joined by the Honourable Joe Oliver, a former uh, Canadian Finance Minister, uh, Sandra Pupatello, former Minister of Economic Development and Trade in Ontario, and Mr. Gary Marr, former Minister of all, almost all things in Alberta, and now President and CEO of the Canada West Foundation. Uh, Joe Oliver, I'm going to go to you next. Uh, we had to cut you off before the break, but you've got the first pass at this one. Obviously, uh, we've got a new finance minister in Canada, Christia Freeland, uh, and uh, she is, uh, had taken the reins already. Now we're talking about a lot of things, including reshaping the social safety net. What, what, what's your reaction and your thoughts as Christia Freeland uh, starts her job as finance minister? Well, to get a handle on where she's going, uh, the best thing is to what she said. And this was on a tweet. She said, I think all Canadians understand that the restart of our economy needs to be green. It also needs to be equitable. It needs to be inclusive. And then she added, and we need to focus very much in growth. Uh, I think uh, she will not, it seems to me, put the brakes on, on runaway spending, which is, I believe, where uh, this, this government uh, has signaled it's, it's going to go, although they certainly didn't put it in those terms. Um, Bill Morneau, uh, in a late night uh, conversion to fiscal rectitude, uh, allegedly uh, uh, advocated uh, some, some restraint. But now what we're hearing talk about is a great reset. That's something which is talked about internationally and the, the World Economic Forum has, has talked about that. And it seems to me what, what the Prime Minister is signaling is significant expenditures, more government uh, intervention. He's not talking about tax increases now, but I, I, I think that's gonna have to happen. We've got a trillion dollars in deficit, uh, uh, in debt, and uh, no indication that the deficits are, are being targeted for reduction. I mean, balance is not possible now, of course, nor is it possible to cut off spending. I don't think this is the time uh, for, uh, uh, you know, for draconian uh, cuts, but there are limits. And I'm not sure what, whether, whether this government is, is contemplating limits in the context of declining uh, poll numbers and an election which could happen at any time in the minority government. Let's hear from uh, Sandra Pupatello, uh, a, uh, a finance minister. You may know her, you may have come across her. What's your take on her uh, challenges and her opportunities? I do think people are going to have to get back to spending and they're going to have to get back to sort of joining the economy and uh, they've got to get back to work and they have to be, be safe doing so. So I think the challenge is that as much as the government can act as a catalyst for some things, uh, basic human nature has to get back to what we're used to, which is spending our money, uh, engaging in the economy, buying cars, uh, going on trips, doing all of those things for small rural places across the country that are completely beholden to the tourism industry, for example, we've got to get people moving again. So the kind of incentive that a finance minister can use policy to create, uh, I hope that that's a route that we'll think about. And I take Joe's point in terms of how much debt we're getting into. Uh, the good news is that different from the 08 uh, catastrophe that, that their government had to live through when they had to bail out industries, and, and you, Tony, had to deal with all of that. We worked together on those projects, saving the auto industry. Um, the difference is that the entire world is in this same boat, and it is in a wild sea together with every country of the world. Um, back then, we were looking at a North American, European uh, major slump that uh, was, you know, sort of different only by degree. This time, it's the whole world, and everyone is spending money they don't have, so all of us are going to have to come out of it together. Uh, that gives us a little bit of pause, almost a little uh, a feeling of, okay, we're, it's not just us, and we've got to get people feeling good about the economy again. Uh, Gary Marr, you, they've given you less, less than a minute. Uh, do, you, do you want to sum up maybe your thoughts on this? We can uh, catch it up after the break as well. I'm not sure that I can add anything more to what Joe and Sandra said. I agree with it. I'll only make this point that, you know, 
if the if the government of Canada wants to go down the road of uh, greening the economy, uh, one of the things that's going to become an issue is the whole issue of competitiveness. Uh, if you look at carbon fuel standards, if you look at um, issues about how we're going to operate, uh, are we going to be layering more and more regulations, making it more and more difficult uh, for businesses to actually make an adaptation uh, to what a new economy might, might look like? And so I'd be quite concerned about whether or not the, in the rush to go forward with this, uh, that we don't take into account uh, how competitive uh, we can be in making sure that our businesses are able to recover. We'll be back with our expert panel after the break. Stay with us. And we're back. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at Boom and Bust at the News Forum with our expert panel. Uh, Gary Marr, we, uh, we left the last segment uh, to the end for you, but I want to give you the first crack at this uh, to talk about things from a regional level. Uh, in, uh, in Alberta, in Western Canada, how should the provincial governments respond to the current economic crisis? Well, I think it should be about looking at training uh, to transition people out of the circumstances that they find themselves in now for jobs that are actually demanded in the marketplace. And so that uh, every province should be looking very carefully at uh, you know, their uh, labor market information and uh, supporting uh, the transition of people from the jobs that they're in to the jobs that are actually out there. And that doesn't mean that you have to go back to school. If you're an engineer, an electrical engineer, uh, you know, maybe a, a little bit of upskilling, a little bit of uptraining uh, will allow you to become a solar electrical engineer if that's uh, where the demand is. And so um, I think that it's all about trying to put, as Sandra and Joe said, putting people back to work, uh, but making sure that they have the skills that are, uh, that are in demand uh, as we transition uh, the nature of our economy. As Sandra Pupatello, you were a former Ontario minister. Uh, what should Ontario be doing uh, as we seek to get out of the economic recession we're in? Well, I do think that I'm very anxious to see how the fall is going to go. And hopefully everyone sort of acts accordingly and we don't have that big second wave or get, you know, related to the pandemic. And there's a confidence that grows with people feeling comfortable to go back to work and comfortable engaging in all of the economy they did before, buying clothes, going to restaurants. Um, our small businesses, we've all seen the numbers. Uh, I fear you know, a big hit with a lot of uh, those stores and and offices just right on the brink of not surviving and a lot of jobs are, are hinged on those types of businesses so I hope um, that we do that that the government of Ontario stays very strong in terms of requiring masks requiring social distance leading by example and that when our schools reopen we can all breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, Sandra, thanks for that. I'm going to have to cut you off. We had a bit of a technical issue with Joe Oliver, but we do have him back now. Uh, Joe Oliver, uh, obviously you had a federal perspective, but very keenly interested in, in regional issues as well. What should the provinces be doing uh, to, to deal with economic recovery, in your view? Well, as, as, as Gary and, and, and Sandra pointed out, there's, there's an uneven impact, of, of course. I mean, and there's special challenges for Alberta, devastated by a double threat of a collapse in oil prices and, and hostile government regulations. But, but generally speaking, we need to enhance our competitiveness, and that means a competitive tax structure. We've got to develop our natural resources. We have to reduce regulation. We have to focus on jobs and growth. Um, Ontario is, is uh, particularly um, dependent on, on manufacturing, but, but it's a diverse economy. And so the, these issues are, are issues that, that affect the, the entire country. And we, we just have to be very uh, strategic and, and take lessons from the past. We know what, what tends to work, what tends to get people back uh, at work, as, as Sandra ha has said uh, on a couple of occasions, and um, we we cannot uh, continue to rely on government to uh, to support the economy indefinitely because they're they're going to run out, out of money. We have to rely on the on the private sector, on individual uh, Canadians uh, getting back to, to work, which is what uh, they want and and need to do. Um, skills development is 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 crucial, um, and we have to avoid. Uh, 
plunking money into uh, un uncompetitive um, sectors uh, that uh, you know that may uh, make us feel better, uh, but aren't going to get the the economy going. We simply can't afford um, in in this kind of um, a fiscal situation to uh, uh, you, you know not to focus on what really will will make an economic difference. Uh, thank you for that. We've got one more segment for our panel, and I want to thank them at this point for being part of this. Uh, stay with us as we continue to talk about the economic future of our country. You're watching Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, and we're with our economic panel. Final segment, final question, big one. I want to take a look at the Canada-U.S. trade relationship uh, post-November. We'll either have a re-elected administration with President Trump or a new President Biden. What do you see as the stakes and the future of the Canada-U.S. trade relationship? I got to go to Gary Marr again first. He was the Alberta agent in Washington, D.C. Gary, what's your prognosis and your take on things? Well, I think that uh, this is a very, very important trade relationship for Canada, and it'll be important for us not to, uh, you know, uh, mess this one up. I'd have to say that uh, President Trump has not been good generally for the relationship uh, uh, for Canada. I mean, 80% of our um, of, of our uh, trade exports go south of the border. Um, the president uh, has uh, promised to move KXL. Uh, that hasn't gotten us anywhere so far. I'd say that should President Biden be successful, um, it will probably improve the relationship, but it might not have uh, the kind of, it'll have an uneven effect across Canada. I think uh, a Biden presidency would probably be good for Quebec, Ontario, British Columbia. Um, for the Western Prairie provinces, it may not make things worse, but I, it's difficult for me to see how they might make things better because, of course, President uh, or Vice President Biden has steadfastly said that he would be opposed to an expansion of, um, of uh, pipeline capacity going into the United States in the form of KXL. Uh, Sandra Pupatello, you were uh, also a trade minister in the province of Ontario. You probably dealt with U.S. trade issues. How do you see things? I have to say that I'm not expecting anything dramatic to change uh, should Biden be successful, at least in the short term. I think they have so many issues to overcome and try to smooth over in America itself that they'll focus on that first. Uh, longer term, I think the the it'll be better, obviously, than, than what we currently have. And I think all of us will breathe a sigh of relief in that at least it won't be so nasty. Uh, I've never in my life heard Canada being spoken to in the way that we have recently. And I don't think any of us on this panel have ever experienced that. So that's a bit shocking. I think that'll go away if Biden wins. If he doesn't and Trump wins again, I think it'll be more of the same. He'll be galvanized and perhaps go even further. Uh, living in Windsor, uh, I can tell you that that trade issue for us, that daily crossing is critical to our future, critical to the Ontario economy for sure, uh, let alone just Canada. So I do worry that we're in it for a bit of a long haul before we see change. And many of us will know the Democrats really were the party that were more anti-trade than the Republicans. So uh, on policy, I'm not sure how much shift we're going to see and in what order and how much time. Joe Oliver, uh, you have the last word. Uh, what do you see in Canada-U.S. trade relations? Well, you know, I think the tone would clearly be different if, uh, if, if uh, Vice President uh, Biden wins. But the substance, uh, while it, may, it will be different to some degree, may not necessarily be better. I mean, after all, um, uh, you know, Biden has been pushing the, the green policies. Now, that will give the current government some, some cover, um, but uh, it, it, it will result, I think, in, in more 
uh, focus on um, perhaps uncompetitive uh, uh, ventures uh, that are costly and won't necessarily make the economy grow more. Um, you know, whether we like uh, someone or don't like someone, what, what really matters, of course, is what the policies are in relation uh, to, to Canada. And there, there I think, would be... Um, you know, somewhat more emphasis on, on social spending with, with Biden, higher higher taxes, which will give this government perhaps uh, a little more uh, opportunity to raise taxes in, in Canada. I, I think, the, uh, you know, the, the Trump administration was a constraint, such as it was, on... on um, uh, on the on the liberal government in in that regard, because the competitive gap, which is which is widened, is is uh, you know just <laughs> there's a limit to how far it can go. I mean, we really don't know what's going to happen. It was interesting that um, a an analyst, uh, Marco Kolonovic, uh at J.P. Morgan, warned on Monday that investors should prepare for for Trump winning uh, the re-election. Well, what the, the significance of that is that he, what he's saying is that different sectors and the market overall will be impacted on, on who wins. And of course, we're dependent, 75% of our trade plus is, is with, the, with the United States. So uh, this is an yeah. election which will impact us. And it's not only in tone, Frankly, it's in substance that, that it will matter most. Sure. And I'm afraid our time is up for today. It has been great having our panel, uh, the first of uh, more, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so let's, uh, let's stay tuned to Boom and Bust and the News Forum for no new exciting content such as this. Thank you for watching.